And then we're going to use the sum formula for sine, except both angles are theta. So it's almost easier than a plus b. Just everything's theta. So the sine goes sine cos cosine. What can I do to simplify this even further? Sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. Yeah, combine like terms. So you got two of them. So it'll be two. The, I think the book goes, it doesn't matter which one you write first. I don't, even, I don't really even look. We'll just go cosine. Two cos theta sine theta. So our first double angle identity, sine two theta equals two sine theta cos theta. So this is, again, one of those identities you don't need to memorize. I put it on your cheat sheet. So this one's tricky to remember, so you don't have to. There's plenty of other things that you need to spend your brain cells memorizing. So that was sine two theta. We'll do the same thing for cos two theta now. Which of course is cos theta plus theta. So go ahead and do the same thing I just did, but go use the cosine sum formula. So you may have to flip back one or two pages in your notes to get this. Actually, you can flip your quiz over too. If you have a quiz from that I gave back yesterday, it's got all the formulas on the back. So I strongly recommend you just hang on to that sheet. If you lose it, uh, you can find that on Canvas also. But just always have that sheet ready because you're always going to have it on midterms and quizzes when you need it. So that's a very good reference for the rest of this section. So go ahead, do the same thing we just did, except you're using the cosine sum formula. Did anybody not get back the quiz who didn't, maybe didn't take it? Because I have blank copies up here. Anybody else not take the last quiz? All right. So how can we, so you should get cos theta, cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta. What can I do to simplify this a little bit? So we go cos squared minus sine squared. So right like that. <clears throat> so this is one of the versions you can use. Now whenever you see cosine squared or sine squared, you can always use the uh, trig identity so I can write cos squared as 1 minus sine squared. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to turn the, cos, the first term, this cos squared right here, cos squared theta into 1 minus sine squared. And then, of course, we can simplify 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And last version, I can play the same game with, instead of cos squared, I will change around sine squared this time. So we're going to get 
cos squared theta minus one minus cos squared theta. So what's wrong with what I just did here? So where I saw sine squared, I just put one minus cos squared in its place. So I need to make the, subtract the whole thing, not just the first term. So go parentheses like this. Now we're subtracting it correctly. So we're going to have cos squared plus cos squared. So we get 2 cos squared minus 1. 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So there's actually three options for cos 2 theta. And I'll write down all three together. So we got. cos 2 theta equals, we'll go with the first one, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And cos 2 theta equals 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Depending on what's going on, you might want to use uh, different versions here. There's really only one version for sine 2 theta, and that's the one right at the top. You can't really turn sine theta into cos theta very easily. So we got our sine, our cos, and we'll do same thing for tangent. What's that? Yeah, so look at your back of your quiz. All that stuff, you'll always have those. You can do what you want. It's not necessary. You need to be aware of them. So like you see cos 2 theta, and you're like, ah, I have three options. So you know like that Like if you have cos 5 theta, there's nothing on the back of your formula sheet that says cos 5 theta, for example. Um, we'll show you, I'll show you how to deal with things like that. but. You know, you see cos 2 theta, you immediately know what your options are for identities. So, no, I think everything in this, in this chapter, or I should say this section, you don't need to memorize. But you can see exactly what's on your formula page. And that's what you will always have on quizzes and midterms. All right, tan 2 theta. So play the same game we just did and simplify as much as you can. Make sure you use the tangent formula this time. The other reason I want you to use that sheet in particular is because that's the exact sheet you're going to get, so you will know exactly where on the sheet to look. You, I'm not going to change the order around. So you know your sum formulas are at the top, these double angles are all together in the middle, et cetera, et cetera. So you should have gotten tangent plus tangent, which is 2 tangent theta on the numerator, and then 1 minus tangent tangent, which is 1 minus tangent squared. So those are all uh, what we call double angle. Simplify. So these are all double angle formulas. So now we're going to talk about notation and uh, what you need to be careful about.
And looks like a W. Oh, who cares? All right, notation. So cos two theta means take your angle theta and double it. So that's why we call them double angles. It means double the angle. Uh, so you don't need parentheses. You're going to a lot of times see the same thing cos 2 theta written as cos 2 theta without parentheses. Now what if you see this looks like cos 2 theta, but this is cos squared theta right here. So it's cos theta squared or cos theta times cos theta. All right, so this, this is not doubling. This is squaring the output of the cosine function. So you square the output of cosine theta. Now what happens if your exponent starts to get lazy and is a little bit too big? You see what the problem starts to look like? So your exponent could sort of fall down and look like a coefficient. So you don't want your exponent to look like a coefficient. So the best way to fix that, in my opinion, if you want two theta, this one right here. Use extra parentheses. I know you're talking about doubling your angle, not squaring the cosine function. So. We'll say this looks ambiguous. There's plenty of times you want to be ambiguous. If you don't know what you're talking about, it's very good to be ambiguous. Uh, but mathematics is not a good time to be ambiguous. So you want to make sure you shouldn't. It should be very clear if you're writing an exponent. So this one's bad. Uh, if you want an exponent, make sure your 2 is small and definitely higher up. And so this is uh, if you want exponent. And if you want coefficient, make sure your 2 is big. Try to make it the exact same size as theta. So it's pretty obvious what you're doing. So, so those are both bad or ambiguous. These would be uh, good. So let's talk about now ways I see this messed up. And I'll do this in red because this is wrong. So this is com common, common error. So you can't. Pull the two, uh oh, pull the two through the sine function. So sine two theta is not two sine theta. It's sort of two sine theta, but it's two sine theta cos theta. And it's a little bit tricky because sine negative theta, in fact, is negative sine theta. You could pull a negative through. You can't pull numbers through though. So you can't just pull a two through the sine function. So that one, the odd. Sign being odd may mess some people up with this uh, double angle. So make sure you don't do the uh, sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta. It's definitely not. So let's do an example problem.
suppose sine theta equals three fifths. So we're going to find sine two theta and cos two theta. All right, so we've got sine is 3 fifths. What quadrant is theta in? Second. Second. So I can go ahead and draw out my triangle right here. Uh, three, so we got opposite hypotenuse. What is the x side of this triangle? So three, four, five triangle is the x side four? Negative four. So we're in quadrant two, so we got negative four for that. So if I draw a triangle out over here, so why am I doing this? I should probably back up and answer that. Uh, so if I want sine two theta using that formula sheet, sine two theta was two sine theta cos theta which I know sine theta is 3 fifths. What is cosine theta? We don't know that quite yet. So I got sine theta, but I need cosine theta. So what I'm doing with this triangle is trying to figure out what is cosine theta. So this triangle came from, so we got our theta right here. Sine theta uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So I did Sokotoa right here. Um, you can also think x and y's in uh, hypotenuse as well. So sine's opposite over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. And I knew uh, we're in quadrant 2, so I want to make sure I draw my triangle in the right quadrant because that dictates what the other, the adjacent sides can be positive or negative. So if it is in quadrant one or four, I would not have a negative x value. I'd have positive. And then you just go Pythagorean theorem. Uh, five squared minus three squared equals four squared. Or three squared plus adjacent squared equals five squared. So adjacent squared is 25 minus nine, which is 16. And here is where you need to know the plus or minus. So we're going minus because of our quadrant. So what is cosine? So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is negative 4 fifths. And all we have to do now is just multiply all this stuff out. 12 times 2, 24, 20 fifths. So this looks like a pretty big negative number. What's the biggest negative number? So we're just saying that sine 2 theta is this negative 24, 20 fifths. What's the biggest negative number I could ever get for a uh, out of the sine function? Negative one. So if I ever go past negative one, maybe I did some arithmetic wrong and maybe I got 27 20 fifths, I would know there's no way I can't go past negative one. So that would, somewhere I would have made a mistake if I said it was bigger than uh, negative one. Well, I should use the word smaller, but I don't like to talk about negative numbers being small. All right, so we got 24, negative 24 20 fifths. Why is it negative one? What's that? Why is it Uh, so on the unit circle, your biggest, smallest x, y values are always negative 1 to positive 1. So you never tangent. Uh, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant are different because they're, they have reciprocals, so their denominators can get really small. So those are not bounded, but uh, sine and cosine, biggest and smallest, negative 1 to positive 1. So if you're outside that range, something went wrong somewhere. Are those triangles all the unit circles, but it's hypotenuse being 5 and not 
Ah, that's a very good question. So I could draw this triangle on the unit circle. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. What would the hypotenuse be on the unit circle? One. So I'm going to redraw it, same angle, but we're going to shrink it down five times smaller, basically. So instead of a five hypotenuse, we're going to go for a one hypotenuse. So we got one right there. There's our theta. And we said the original thing we had was sine is 3 fifths. Sine theta equals 3 fifths. So there's two ways to think about it. If I think about this being opposite, uh, opposite over hypotenuse, well, if I want my hypotenuse to be 1, I certainly can't say it's 5. So I can't just say, uh, you know, opposites 3 and hypotenuse is 5. That'll make hypotenuse 5, not 1. So I'm going to rewrite 3 fifths with a denominator of 1. So I'll write it like that. So the same fraction, I'm just dividing by 1. And now we can say this is our opposite and hypotenuse. So our opposite is 3 fifths. How do I get the adjacent side now? I'll call it B. What's the oldest theorem you know about? Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to go Pythagorean theorem. Uh-oh, we have fractions. No problem. So we got 3 fifths squared plus B squared equals 1 squared. So 3 fifths squared is 9 20 fifths plus B squared equals 1 and subtract. And B squared equals 25 20 fifths minus 9 20 fifths, which is something 16 20 fifths. So regular B is plus or minus. This square roots perfectly to 4 fifths. And then for the same exact reason, we're going to choose minus for our 4 fifths. So B is 4 fifths. Uh, negative four fifths. So we have, I believe they call these similar triangles. There, it's the same triangle. It's just scaled down five times smaller. So you could just say everything's divided by five. Um, and you can go either way. You're going to deal with fractions if you go the second way. I did this. You're going to deal with fractions. So if you want fractions, go for it. Uh, if you don't want fractions, go this first way up here. Uh, but either way, it's a similar triangle. You're basically doing the same work. So because the sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse, it's a ratio. The unit circle tells us that the sine will never be bigger than negative 1 in this case. Yes. Uh, and there's a few ways to think about sine. Up here, I said sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You could also say sine is y. But it's y on the unit circle. It's not y on a bigger circle. So is y when your radius is 1. If your radius is not 1, you get sine theta is y over r. So your radius is not 1. You're not on the unit circle. You're going to have to divide by r. Now, technically, if r is 1, you got the same thing. You just don't want r to be uh, 0 or negative or something weird is happening. So if your r or your hypotenuse is 0 or negative, something went wrong somewhere. So your hypotenuse should always be a positive number. All right, so there's sine 2 theta. How about cos 2 theta? So all you have to do is scroll up or flip back in your notes. Now there's three choices you can use. Let's uh, pretend that maybe I got this cosine theta wrong. There was just 60 eyes watching. Nobody said anything, so it's probably correct. But maybe I'm going really quickly on my midterm because I'm running out of time. Think about the three options you can use. What I'm going to use is the second option right here. I'm going to use the one that only has sine in case I messed up cosine. So I can use all three, whichever one I want. But if I made a mistake on cosine, my mistake's going to carry through to this step also. So 
Oh, the first one was cos squared minus sine squared. Yeah, because maybe I messed up and maybe cosine is not actually negative four fifths. So if I mess that up, my error is going to come through on the next part also. And here I can avoid using cosine altogether by going with the second option. So I'm going to use one minus two sine squared theta. which is 1 minus 2 times 3 fifths squared. So we get 18 20 fifths. So 25 minus 18, 7 20 fifths. Questions on cos 2 theta. What would I get if I add it together, negative 24 20 fifths and 7 20 fifths, if I square them and add them together? So go, let's go ahead and do that. Let's check. So we got 7, negative 24 20 fifths squared plus 7, and that should be negative, but that won't matter, plus 7 20 fifths squared. Why does that equal 1? Sine squared Yep, that comes from if I add up sine squared plus cos squared of any angle, whether it's 2 theta, a million theta, doesn't matter as long as it's the same angle. If I square them, add them together, I should get one. So if I square these, add them together, I get one, which means 24 squared plus 7 squared equals 25 squared. Just multiply both sides by 25 squared. So here's another Pythagorean triple right here. So I don't really want to square 24 or square 7, or square 25, well, 25, no, I don't want to square that either. Oh, it's 625, that's easy. 7 squared is 49, oh, who cares? You can do all the arithmetic and check, but you should get 1 if you add them up. So we're going to begin with cos 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And we're going to do something slightly weird. We're going to solve for sine squared theta. So solve for sine squared theta. There is sine squared theta. So what are the two algebra moves I have to make to get sine squared theta by itself? So I subtract one and then multiply by negative a half or divide by negative two. So we got cos two theta minus one equals two sine squared theta and then oops, negative two sine squared theta divide by negative two. Equals just sine squared theta. So let's make, flip the sign everywhere. So we're going to have 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2 equals sine squared theta. So that should be another formula on your cheat sheet right there. 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2 equals sine squared theta. So I basically multiply by negative 1 over negative 1. So I want to have, there was two negatives out of three, so I just wanted to have one negative and then two positives. All right, so that is solve for sine squared. Now we're going to do 
something very similar. Cos2 theta, we're going to use the cos squared one, which is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Is that right? 2 cos squared theta minus 1, yes. All right, so here, solve for cos squared theta. So go ahead and do that right now. It's pretty much the same two steps that we did before. So we just did a sine squared, we got a sine squared formula, a cos squared formula, and now we're going to look for a tangent squared formula. Unfortunately, I can't just run back to, the only thing I really know is this tangent 2 theta right here, and I could solve for tangent squared in the denominator, but that's going to be a little bit of work. So we're going to do a slightly different way instead. So we're going to begin with, tan squared theta, and the way we're going to write it is sine squared over cos squared. And now, sine squared and cos squared, we're going to use the two uh, equations on the board in the boxes. So sine squared and cos squared. We're just going to so we're going to have a fraction of fractions for a minute. So sine squared is 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2 divided by 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. So we got fraction of fractions. You could use some extra parentheses to keep track of what is where. Can I reciprocate the denominator fraction? 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. Is that ready to be reciprocated? Multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Do I have to do any work before that? So when do I have to do some work before I multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator? Yeah, if I, if basically, if, if the fractions are added together, if there's not one fraction. There is one fraction, so all I have to do is flip it over. If it was separate, if it was uh, you know, 1 half plus cos 2 theta over 2, I'd have to add them together into one fraction. But we got just one fraction, so I can flip it over, no problem. Uh, there's another way to get past this, and you've seen this a little bit before, although you may not have noticed. So I can multiply by, I see that there's a 2 and a 2. So, or I should say half and a half. So what I'm going to do is multiply by a 2 and a 2 right here. So this 2 is going to get multiplied in the numerator. This 2 is going to get multiplied in the denominator. The reason I'm doing this is because it's going to cancel the half and the other half right away. So I have 1 minus cos 2 theta over 1 plus cos 2 theta. And that is our tangent squared identity right there. So we got 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 1 plus cos 2 theta equals tan squared theta. So as you're taking your notes here, you want to make sure what I was warning you about with exponents and coefficients, make sure they look different. So in case your exponents are getting lazy and falling down, or your coefficients are shrinking, make sure you can see very clearly exponents and coefficients. So now we're going to go for some examples. 
So we're going to reduce cos to the fourth theta to single powers of cosine. So do we have any identities for cos to the fourth? Nope. Do we have identity for cosine squared? So how can I write cos to the fourth, rewrite it so it has cosine squared? So that's not equal right now. That's right. So if I square it, it'll be cos times cos times cos times cos. So cos squared squared because Two, so powers of powers are products, so 2 times 2 is 4. So this uses the a to the b to the c is a to the bc. So that's the algebra property we just used right there. And the one you probably will never forget, hopefully, is this one. What's a to the b times a to the c? A to the power b plus c. Yep, a to the b plus c power. So if you got powers uh, with the same, same base, you can add the powers. And if you have power of a power, you multiply. So I know what to do with cos squared. Uh, unfortunately, there's three choices. So I want to reduce to single powers of cosine. So cos squared. So I don't think I can use any of these. So we're going to use cos squared down here. So I got cos squared is 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. So I'm going to use that identity, 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. So we're going to expand this. Now you want to be careful. Another exponential property, a over b to the c, a to the c over b to the c. So you got a fraction to a, a power. You can distribute the power to the numerator denominator. So we got 1 plus cos 2 theta squared over 2 squared. So I have to be careful and make sure I square the entire numerator. Don't just square one part of it. So now my second favorite F word, FOIL. So I use, so cos squared theta. So we took cos squared theta and turned it into that right there. And then we were just squaring that fraction right there. All right, so 2 squared is 4. That's easy. I'll just write it as 1 fourth times. All right, now I'm going to FOIL the 1 plus cos 2 theta. So we're going to get 1 squared plus cos 2 theta plus cos 2 theta, 2 cos 2 theta, and plus cos squared 2 theta. So are we down to single powers of cosine? What is preventing us? What's the term that's not yet in single powers of cosine? Cos squared? We got to get rid of cos squared. So how do we get rid of the squared? So you can't just cross it out because we don't want it. Uh, we need to be careful about how we get rid of it. So unfortunately, I don't have a cos squared 2 theta. So what I'm going to do is start with this. Cos squared equals cos squared theta equals 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. So we know cos squared is 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. And what I'm going to do is take each theta and double it. So as long as I treat everybody the same, it's OK. So I'm going to make 
change this around. Cos squared 2 theta equals 1 plus cos 2 times 2 theta over 2. So wherever I saw theta, I just doubled it in each spot right there. So you might be hung up on the notation. Well, how can you just take theta and change it? Well, let's use a different letter. Let's just go with phi right here. So it doesn't matter what letter you use. I could use x, y, z, any letter in our alphabet, and then just let 2 theta equal phi, and then you have your second line down there. So we're just basically renaming our variable. And then 2 theta times 2 is 4 theta. So we got 1 plus cos 4 theta over 2 equals cos squared 2 theta. So that is the substitution we're going to make right here for cos squared 2 theta. So we got 1 plus cos 4 theta over 2 and then just copy the rest down. All right, are we in single powers of cosine? Took a lot of work, but we got no cos squared, no cos cubed, no cos to the fourth, so every cosine. Now the angles are all different, but there's no cos squareds or cos to higher powers. This is not a good quiz or exam problem because the ending is very nebulous. So I think I have a couple web works like this, but you won't see this type on your uh, actual midterm. All right, so this problem is, this example problem, it says solve. Solve for what? Almost. So what's our actual variable? Theta. theta. So we're going to solve for theta. If you want, you can put x, x instead of theta, theta. Uh, but we're going to solve for theta. So just looking at this, do you know a sine and cosine, uh, a theta value such that sine and cosine, when you multiply them, makes negative 1 half? I can get 1 half in one of them. But I know, for example, if I make sine 1 half, cosine will be plus or minus square root 3 over 2. Just think about when sine is 1 half, the other one is uh, square root 3 over 2, or negative square root 3 over 2. And certainly, multiplying those together, you're not going to get negative 1 half. So off the top of my head, I can't just say, oh, well, this is what theta should be. So sine theta times cos theta. Do we have any identities that have a sine theta times cosine theta? Hint, we do. Which one is it? So flip back. I don't think you have to go more than two pages back. You may have this right on the back of your cheat sheet as well. What if I multiply 2 sine theta cos theta? What is that equal to? Sine 2 theta. All right, so how do I solve for sine theta cos theta? It's very easy. Multiply by 1 half. Let's get the 2 out of there. 
All right, so sine theta cos theta is 1 half sine squared theta. So let's make that substitution. 1 half sine squared theta equals negative 1 half. So I want to solve for theta. So I'm going to make it super bold. So in algebra, what I like to think about doing algebra, you're basically rescuing theta. So you've got to clear out everything that's around theta. What's around theta? Well, 1 half sine squared. So how do I, let's write this in better notation. All right, PEMDAS, P-M-D-A-S. All right, you've seen this before? Please excuse my dear asshole sister. So why do I write it MD at the same time? Because there is no division. There's really only multiplication. They happen at the exact same time. You don't do multiplication before division. You do them at the same time. All right, addition, subtraction, they're the same thing. You don't add before you subtract. You can subtract before you add. So when in doubt, you're going to go up the ladder when you're doing algebra. If you're an expert, you don't have to necessarily go up the ladder, but when in doubt, go up the ladder when you're doing algebra. If you're doing arithmetic, you're going to go down the If you're evaluating, you go down the ladder. All right. Do we have any addition subtraction? Nope. Multiplication division. Yep. Multiply by two. Uh, we get negative one. All right. Uh oh. It's not gonna have a solution. All right. Let's change the problem. So students aren't allowed to do this. Only math professors. So I realize we're gonna have an issue right here. So I'm changing it to regular one half. All right. We took care of multiplication division. Any exponents? Yep, square root everything. Sine theta equals plus or minus square root 1, which is plus or minus 1. So we got 2 sine theta equals 1, or sine theta equals negative 1. All right, what theta values have a uh, sine of what theta value equals 1? Five over 2. Five or two. And what about, what theta value has sine negative 1? Remember, that's your y-coordinate on your unit circle. So where on your unit circle has a y-coordinate of negative 1? So it's got to have a pi in it. So we got either 3 pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. And I'll show you why I went with 3 pi over 2. Uh, at the very top, I wanted to make sure that theta was between 0 and 2 pi. So that's why I want to choose 3 pi over 2, not negative pi. So there's our final answer.